double from Ivan Tony then earning Brentford a victory over Brighton last night. And you know what, Cass? Tomorrow we'll do we'll do our goal of the week. It's job done. <laughs> Ivan Tony's first goal is going to win it because it was incredible that flick finish that all started from Brian and Burmo running down, um, well, kind of running past the Brighton defenders, playing in Frank Onyeka, who then cut it back for Tony to just flick it past Adam Webster and into the Brighton goal. It was a tremendous goal. Um, yeah. Has he booked his ticket for Qatar? <laughs> it's not yet, not yet convinced. No, I, I don't. That's the case because, look, just obvious reasons. He didn't play for England. He didn't get selected. Mm. He got chosen in a squad, and Gareth didn't use him. I, I think that's. <laughs> it's a bit damning for Ivan Tony that he didn't. You know, loads of managers have said the same thing. You know, spoke about what he deserves and his merit. He should be there on merit and. I just don't know if Gaff's going to pick him. I think he'll be in the initial squad, but when the final squad gets announced, I have my doubts. He's done well enough. You, if you're judging on what how well he's played, you can certainly make a great case for him being there. By the way, we had a, a Brentford fan who was our cab driver this morning. Did and he you? started speaking the game. And he said, Natalie would be happy this morning. Oh, yeah. And then he, he was from Patrick from Ireland. And then he gave oh. me a mention. And then I said to him, so you're a Brentford fan, are you, of the last couple of years? Because you're a Premier League team now. That's out of order. He might have been, <laughs> might be a family tradition. Who knows? Um, oh, listen, I mean... But, yeah, he was waxing lyrical about Ivan Tony yeah. And Rico Henry, who you, I you must be honest, you've mentioned Rico Henry yeah. a number of times over the last six months. Well, uh, just to reiterate with the stats for, for Ivan Tony that was his 100th appearance Here for Brentford. Here we go. No, I'm just saying. 100 <laughs> appearance for Brentford. His yeah. 54th goal scored that second one, that penalty. Since his debut uh, for Brentford in September 2020, only Mo Salah, Harry Kane and Johnson Clark Harris have scored more for senior English clubs. And the other stat is, since the start of last season, he has scored 20 Premier League goals, only outscored by Hyung Min Son, Harry Kane and Mohamed Salah. Mm. So on stats alone... Surely you'd be going, he's, he's a given for, for Gareth Southgate. I do understand what you're saying about the fact he was called up and not played. For me, was sent alarm bells ringing because I thought, well, that's just opened the door for others rather than maybe thinking mm. if he's playing, it might give him the edge. Um, but if he carries on this form up until when Gareth Southgate has to finalise his squad, he has got to be in the reckoning. Yeah. You've got to have a, a manager that's brave enough to choose him as well. Mm. And Gareth might, if he heard that me saying that, he might think, "Well, I am brave as a manager. Well, well, you should that, be, you should be picking him because mm. he deserves by what he's done on the football field, and he scares the life out of defenders." My first time I thought he could be an England player was when I watched him at Chelsea in the four-one victory you had last year, when Thiago Silva and Rudiger, <laughs> two incredible international footballers, got absolutely run ragged. A by game him. he didn't even score in, but he yeah, was so influential. But he caused isn't it? them yeah. so many problems, yeah. and I thought if he can cause Thiago Silva and Rudiger problems, he's good enough for international football without a doubt. Well, let's hear from the Brentford head coach, Thomas Frank, who was full of praise for his striker, Tony, after that brace last night. He feels that once again he has proved he has something to offer for England. Maybe I'm not the right to answer that question, uh, not picking him uh, for the team. Uh, but as I said, uh, deeply respect uh, Gareth and he, he sees the big picture. Uh, of course, uh, I know Ivan so well. I'm also a little bit biased because I'm emotional attached to, to, to Ivan. But the things he brings and the different abilities he got, I think, I think he get, get, can give something to a squad that they don't have. 20 penalties from 20 he has scored for Brentford. As usual, I never watch them because I just find it so nerve-wracking watching him take his penalties. But he is, and everyone's talked about it now, how ice cool have you ever seen anyone take a penalty like he does? I mean, last night he wasn't even looking at the ball. He's just watching the keeper. Um, I think Matt Letizia was yeah. pretty cool. Um, I, I don't think as cool as, obviously, Ivan Tony. I, if I'm showing my age now and go back as long as Ray Stewart, who was an unbelievable penalty taker for West Ham, a Scottish player who was terrific at penalties. But no, he's coolness and under pressure. And there was something about Ivan Tony that really... Did, that makes you feel like he knows where he's going and every level he's got to, people have questioned whether he'd be good enough for the championship. Would he be good enough for League One? He, you know, he's a lad that was rejected by, by Newcastle. Mm. And yet, 
every level he's got to, he's shown he's very capable. And I think he's one of them players, he'll get to the, the very top eventually and he'll show that he could certainly... The, the problem is with England, you've always got Harry Kane at yeah. the moment, is that he's number one choice and it's all fighting for second spot. But Ivan Tony offers something very different. I really like Callum, Callum Wilson. I mm -hmm. always have done. Mm -hmm. I think because he's so dynamic and powerful and he's got this instinct of getting goals mm -hmm. on one-on-ones especially. But you could have the pair of them in there. You know, that they are the, the two that I really think are behind Harry Kane. And Tammy and Ollie Watkins, I would probably say, are the ones that follow the group behind. Yeah. It's a result that has taken Brentford up to eighth in the table, one place behind Brighton, who they beat. I thought Brighton were all huff but no puff, really, when it came to them, because they've had the, the yeah. same old problems. They can create a lot, and they did create a lot in that game and tested David Rea, but Rea was absolutely brilliant. And I must say, after the calamitous um, <laughs> performance against Newcastle, where, unfortunately for David Rea, he was at fault for one of the goals at least, that was a superb performance by him in goal for Brentford last night. Um, I didn't really think Brighton had much of a threat, really, and that has been their biggest problem. They can create a lot, but they don't mm. really have anyone to stick it in the back of the net. And one thing I wanted to mention is, how did Joel Veltman not get a booking? <laughs> he had so many fouls in that game and he didn't get a booking. I was really surprised. By it. I was actually quite surprised by some of the sort of sly, niggly, niggly yeah, things. Yeah, ma marginal. From marginal mm. de uh, fouls that he committed often. And I'm, I'm with you, but look, Brian have got... Trossard can get a goal. Yeah, yeah. Pascal Gross can get a goal. Yeah. Danny Welbeck does brilliantly well, leads the line fantastically, but he's not going to get 10 goals a season. No. Danny's goal return is not great. And yet he's a fantastic team player and many things that he does for the, the side. Um, but it does come at a cost. It was a typical game where, and this happened a number of times last season, where Brighton just didn't look like scoring. Mm, you know, exactly. they, they, they had a number of games under Graham Potter where you just felt, you know, they're not a, a side that are going to convert many chances that they get. Yeah. There was one Brighton fan, I should quickly say, that... Uh, wasn't happy with how I was excited about Brentford's win <laughs> and basically said we were terrible and he hopes hopes we go down. I thought, well, that's just a bit bitter, isn't yeah. it? Oh, bitter and okay. twisted. Pint are a bitter and yeah, twisted there. I thought, what yeah. are you drinking, mate? You do sound a bit bitter. But anyway, it was Brentford that came away with the victory after had, having gone through a spell of uh, not winning. I think, was it three games before that we hadn't won? So uh, as, as a Brentford fan, I'm absolutely delighted. Game Day Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Saturday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.